Uh, all right, uh, let's start. So in uh, so this is uh, the outline for today's lecture. So first we will go through some announcements, and then let's have a quick recap and uh, show y I'll show you the roadmap for the next uh, for this week and next week. And after that, we will learn two important uh, topics, uh, relational algebra and query execution. So the first announcement is that we don't have any quiz uh, t uh, this week. Uh, however, you will have your quiz six due by next Friday. And that is your last quiz. And as for the scores of the quiz, you you are doing pretty well so far, and the average score is a little bit higher than previous terms. For the, the second announcement is about uh, assignment two. So we have released uh, the specifications for the first two questions, and uh, we are finalizing the last three of them, and the due date is by uh, the Friday next week, and and you should submit your special considerations uh, early as early as possible, and you should submit your ELP extension request uh, 24 hours before the due date. And let's and that's all about uh, the announcements. Let's have a quick recap and uh, have a look at the roadmap. So in, in our last lecture, we have learned uh, the actual usage of functional dependencies. And we have learned several important concepts. The first one is closure. So can you still remember the definition of closures? So what is the definition here for closure? Given a set of functional dependencies, what is the closure for this set of functional dependencies? Is the set of functional dependencies that could be derived based on this set of functional dependencies. So that is the definition of closure. However, the uh, the closure for functional dependencies is also is often very, very large, and it is impractical to be used uh, for many algorithms. So instead of using functional dependency closures, we use attribute closures. And, and do you remember how to calculate the attribute closure? Uh, you don't need to worry if you can't remember <laughs> the exact algorithm uh, because I will show you our plan next to help you to memorize all these concepts. And the usage of closure is often related to determining keys uh, because the closure for keys can cover the entire, the, the all the attributes of a relation. So that's the usage of closures. And another concept related to closure is minimal cover. It is the smallest complete set of is the smallest complete set of uh, functional dependencies. So that's the definition of minimal cover. And the second key concept we learned in our last lecture is called normal forms. So the most commonly used normal forms are the third normal form and the BCNF. So do you remember which one is uh, has less redundancies? Which one will produce as less redundancy? BCNF, actually. And, and I hope you can remember the restrictions of these two um restrictions uh, or normal forms so this is this is actually the the restriction for the functional dependencies required by bcnf 
and th these are the restrictions required by the third NF. As you can see, it has one more allowed pattern here. So, so third NF is a little bit less strict than BCNF. So it allows more redundancy. And talking about uh, normal forms, we have learned the process of normalization. And we have learned some algorithms for calculating third NF or BCNF. So you don't have to recite, you don't have to recite the algorithm, but you have to understand how it works. So for third NF, W the algorithm starts with building a reduced minimal cover of the functional dependencies. And starting with the minimal cover, we gradually include tables into our collection, schemas into our da database schema. So that's the algorithm for third NF. For BCNF, the algorithm is to check, to go through all the functional dependencies one by one and try to identify wh whichever functional dependency that will violate the restrictions of BCNF. And then we separate tables according to the functional dependencies that could violate the restrictions here. So that's the algorithm of BCNF. So, so our plan here is like this. So instead of getting you overwhelmed by those algorithms, because there are several details and it is, it is quite lengthy, so, so you don't need to worry about reciting those algorithms. What we will do now is, our plan is, I will guide you through all the, I will give you all the concepts and all the knowledge uh, as fast as possible and then I will provide you more practical examples about those algorithms in, uh, in our following up lectures. So today, we are going to learn relational algebra plus uh, query execution. And on Thursday, we will learn performance tuning, transactions, serializability, and more examples on the theoretical concepts. I don't want you to recite those algorithms. Uh, instead, I wish you could understand them. So, so I will try to spare some time to go through more examples for those algorithms for you to understand how they work. So, in, in the next week, I will I will be out for a conference, and uh, but I will provide you a summary of the entire course with a video and some slides. So that's our roadmap, and, uh, and now let's jump into the main content today. So the first topic we are going to learn today is relational algebra. So relational algebra can be viewed as the mathematical system for manipulating relations, or it's like the data manipulation language for the relational models. So in relational algebra, it consists of uh, operands, operator, and rules of combining operands and operators into expressions, and rules for evaluating these expressions. So why it is important for us to learn relational algebra is because it forms the basis of the, D the DBMS implementation. So in our previous lectures, what we have learned is from the user's point of view. We learn how to design databases, uh, schemas. We learn how to, we learn how to use SQL, and we learned how to use programming language to interact with SQL, to interact with DBMS. But we didn't learn from the designer or developer of the DBMS. Uh, so uh, point of view. So, so what we are going to learn now is the mechanism of DBMS. So, so this is uh, 
So uh, this is uh, why we need to learn relational algebra. And the second reason here is uh, relational al algebra operations are like the machine code for DBMS. So instead of executing the queries directly, it actually translate the queries into some kind of uh, relational algebra operations. And with these, uh, and what the DBMS actually execute is a sequence of these uh, relational algebra op operations. So that's why we need to learn it. And, 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 and most of you may expect that you are not uh, going to uh, join a database company to design DBMS. And most of you will only uh, be using it in the future. But why we are le still learning this is because if you know the mechanism of DBMS, you can leverage this knowledge to optimize the query you are writing. So sometimes uh, in, in assignment two, you may notice that uh, the performance matters. So in real world, if you are dealing with large databases, you will have to consider the performance of the query you have written. So if you want to optimize your queries, you need to understand how databases work. That's why, uh, that's another reason for us to learn about uh, the, me the mechanisms here. And in order to learn the mechanism of how DBMS work, we need to learn uh, the so-called machine code for DBMS, and that is relational algebra operations. So you may, ha you may encounter a, a, a lot of uh, concepts similar to what you have learned for SQL in this in today's lecture. And let's go through the details. So the core relational algebra operations we are going to learn are rename, which is, to, which is used to change the names of relations or attributes. And selection, which is to select a subset of rows or tuples. And projection which is used for choosing a sub subset of attributes or columns. And, and we are also going to learn some uh, set operators like union, inter intersection, or difference, uh, which is used to combine uh, relations. And we are also going to learn product and drawing, which are used to combine relations as well. And and some common extensions for relational algebra are aggregation, projection, plus plus, or division. Uh, so we are, we are also going to learn division today, but we are not learning the mechanisms of aggregation and projection plus plus. So, so let's remember the concepts of, uh, so, uh, so, so let's have a quick overview of uh, what the these options will do. So first, for select, it actually helps us to extract rows or tuples from a given table. And project is used to extract attributes or columns. And as you can see, with project and select, we can get the exact piece of data we would like to retrieve. And for drawing, drawing is used to combine different tables into a larger table. So that's an overview of uh, these operations. And, and we will also learn some set operators, set operations and renaming to make the, this algebra complete. So here are the notations we are going to use here. So, um, uh, so uh, formally, these relational algebra uh, is using some Greek symbols. But for for readability, let's use mm, the notation like this. So so instead of using the Greek uh, symbol here, we, we we will just use select to represent select, project to represent project, 
draw and to represent drawing. I believe you have encountered this symbol in the last lecture. And rename, we just use the keyword rename. So uh, let's use the following notations here in our slides. And for other operations, we adopt uh, the standard notation. So that's, uh, for example, for set operations, we just use the symbols used for uh, for those set operations. So, so, so in in our f in the following slides, this is how we are going to describe these operations. So we define the mechanism of operations using the conditional set expressions because these operations will produce as sets of tuples or sets of rows and most of them uh, most of them will produce as sets so uh, this is the notation for for writing a set of values fulfilling certain condition and for tuple notations here here is uh, uh, here are two different notations of representing tuples. So T A B representing it is means uh, the extracting t attributes A and B from the tuple T, and this this symbol uh, this symbol here means is a tuple with uh, the values of X Y and Z. And for each operation, uh, we will also try to describe uh, describe how it actually works uh, in algorithms or plain language. But but do note that the algorithm um, to be introduced in the following up slides may not be the actual implementation of DBMS. So it's it's just to help you to understand how it works. So that's the that's how we interpret uh, the the following slides. And and all the and here are some more uh, some more information for you to take note of. So all uh, our relational algebra operators return a result of a uh, type relation. So it's a collection of uh, tuples. And for convenience, we name the intermediate result, and we can use it later. So this is this is an example. So we can give a name to the intermediate result of some operations, and then we can use it later. So this is just just for clarity. And the first operation we are going to learn today is called rename. So it's actually very similar to how you give aliases for attribute or table names when you do when you write an SQL query. So rename provides uh, a a, 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 mean a tool for schema mapping. So so if an expression E returns a relation like this, and and rename will give us a relation called S. It it actually contains the same set of tuples of E, and it actually but the name is just uh, but the names are different, so it doesn't have any actual effect uh, on the the actual data. It's just renaming it, just giving it a uh, a name. So it is like the identity function on the contents of a relation and the only thing it changes is the schema it doesn't affect the actual data so so it's, it, it is just for giving the uh, a complex uh, set of operations a new name so so for example we can we can we can actually use re the rename function to rename sequences of operators instead of just one oper uh, operation. As you can see here, uh, we can actually, um, uh, these, these three are essentially the same. These three set of uh, operations are essentially the same. 
and we can use rename to rename the entire an entire sequence of of operations and we can also use rename to just rename a particular variable so this is the rename operation it is actually quite uh, straightforward and in SQL what uh, in SQL the similar concept is apart from using aliases assigning aliases to uh, attributes and tables uh, if um, uh, it, it is actually similar, also similar to you know, giving a set of views uh, by uh, r renaming renaming a sequence of operations is similar to creating a set of views. So it doesn't affect the actual data. It's just cre to create uh, a reference to that set of data. So that's the the uh, the basics about rename. And the second operation we are going to learn is select selection. So selection is actually uh, is actually a little bit different from from the select keyword or operation in SQL. So selection actually returns a subset of tuples in a relation that satisfies a specific condition. However, it doesn't specify the attributes to be selected to be returned so it will just return all the attributes for a given relation so this is select and as you can notice here uh, this is the set condition set notation for the selection operation so how do we interpret this is it's a set made up of elements t uh, such that T is from the original relation and it can fulfill the condition C. So this is uh, this is the definition of of selection, and the result size, as you may notice, is always smaller than or equal to the original relation, because if we select everything, it will be equal. The size would be equal to the original relation and otherwise it's smaller than the original relation and the re result schema the attributes is the same as the schema of R so with select we, we don't here in relational algebra we don't specify the attributes to be selected so it will return all the attributes uh, that is that are included in R, so that's the key. There's some something you have to take note of, and here is an algorithm for for doing this selection. So basically, we, we can what we can do is we can just go through all the tuples in the relation, and it if it fulfills uh, the condition, we will include it into the result. So that's uh, the algorithm for doing selection. And here are some examples of uh, here are some examples for selection. So as you can see, uh, we can we can specify different conditions for doing selection, and it will give us different results, of course. Mm, and uh, another thing to take note of here is uh, the result will have all the attributes from R. Will have all the attributes from R. So now you may wonder. What if we just want to select a few sub attributes or a subset of attributes from R? What can we do? So, so we need another operation here, which is called projection. So projection is used to return a set of tuples containing a, s a set of a subset of attributes in the original relation. So, as you can see here projection is returning a subset of attributes of the original relation so so here uh, you may uh, a key thing you you have to take note of is that if we don't if in the projection we don't select the key we may end up of having duplicates 
And in SQL, if you don't select the key, it, it the result will include all the duplicate values. And bec that's because for SQL queries, by default, if you don't select distinct without without a key, it it's generating a bag of values which allows duplicates. But in relational algebra, duplicates are automatically removed because it's operating on sets. So this this is a key difference between relational algebra and uh, and uh, SQL. And of course, the result size is always smaller than smaller than or equal to the number of attributes in the original relation. So this is from the algorithm. Uh, this is the algorithm. So it's kind of similar to uh, select, but instead of going through all the tuples, they are going through all the columns. So here are some examples for projection. So as you can see, we can use projection to select entire columns. And with the combination of projection and selection, we can somehow construct the select queries in SQL. As you can see, we can specify the tuple and we can specify the attributes. And now let's uh, now we have learned how to how to extract certain a particular value from a given table by locating the the exact column and row. And now let's learn some set operators for us to manipulate the results or the relations. So relational algebra defines three different set operators. Uh, the first one is called union. So union, the concept of union is very similar to the concept of, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the mathematical concepts in the set theory. And in the section is also the same. And another thing here is called difference. So uh, it's also very similar to the set operators of what we have learned in SQL. So for union and intersection, the order doesn't matter. So R union S and S union R will give us the same result. R intersect S or S intersect R will give us the same result. However, R difference, uh, uh, R minus S, and S minus R will give us different results most of the times. So how here, uh, for in, in order to use set operations, all the relations involved as operands must have the same schema. So in other words, they must be union compatible. So that's the first requirement here. And the second restriction here is all the operations will give us a set of results. And the behavior is quite similar to SQL. So in order to, in order to get back, we need to add the keyword all. So this is, here are the set operators. So for union, the concept is uh, kind of straightforward. It is used to combine two compatible relations into a single relation via set union. And in this union step, all the duplicates are removed. And the result size is always smaller than or equal to the, the, the combination or the, uh, the, the, the combination of the size of the individual relations so I if there's no if there's no duplicate the size equals to the uh, size of r1 plus the size of r2 if there are duplicates the size 
the, the, the size of the result relation is smaller than R1, size of R1 plus size of R2. And here is the algorithm uh, for calculating union. So, so it's like for for so we initiate the result with one of the operands, and then we 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 uh, we introduce the the we introduce the items of the second re uh, the second relation one by one. So that's the the algorithm here. And the concept of intersection is is defined as it is to combine two compatible relations into a single relation where the set intersection of sets of tuples. So it the, 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 the concept is very straightforward as well. And the algorithm here is we initiate the result set as an empty site and and for each for each tuple in one of the operands we check if this tuple appears in the other operand and if so we will put it into the result so that's how we do intersection and here is a uh, uh, so here are some examples for unions and intersections. So, for example, for t, uh, t we have th this. For U, we have this. The union is to combine them together and remove duplicates. So the first row, they are, they are essentially the same. So I only, only one instance of the first row appears in the result. And as you can see here, the restriction is the two the two operands must have the same schema here. So they must all have A, B, C, and D as the attributes. So here, uh, here's the example. And the last operation, uh, uh, the, the last operator for sets is called difference. Difference is used to find a set of attributes that exist in one relation but do not occur in the second compatible relation. So it's it still requires the the two relations to be union compatible, which means that they must the two operate the two operators must have the same set of attributes. And And as you can see, the condition, the set condition here, is essentially reflecting the the fact that a tuple m must appear in one of the in the left opera operand, and it shouldn't appear in the right operand. So the 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 order matters here. And from the mechanic from the mechanism. It is actually like uh, the complement of set intersection. It's like removing the intersect or removing the intersection from the left operand. So this is the the operation of difference. So the algorithm from the algorithm point of view, this is uh, how we can implement uh, set difference. As you can see here, we just need to change the we just need to reverse the condition here uh, from how we calculate intersect so we just instead of t from r t t is in r r2 we should use t is not in r2 here so that's why difference could be considered as the complement of set intersection so here is an example of uh, difference. So you do notice that uh, the order matters here. So you have two key things to take note of here. The first one is they must be union compatible, which means that they should have the same set of attributes for the two operands. The second thing here is uh, the order matters here. So only the only the 
the the res the result of the tuples in the right left operator is kept in the result. So this is the an example of difference. And we can and uh, and another thing after covering the how we select data using selection and projection and after learning how to combine results using set operators what we are going to what we are going to learn is how can we combine different tables or combine different relations and relational algebra has several ways for combining uh, these relations and is it it has a mapping to the join operator of sql queries but the but some of them they don't have an exact match so the first the first uh, concept here or the first operation here is called product it is it is the Cartesian Cartesian product, so it will give us a very large table in this uh, in this sense. We will learn that later. And the second concept here, uh, the second operation here is called natural join. So it is to join two tables on the common attributes. The third one is theta join. It is to join two tables that fulfills certain conditions. And the fourth operation here is called outer join. So as uh, in this example here, it is a left outer join. You can see there are two uh, small extensions here in this symbol. So this means it's left outer join. So uh, I I the concepts of these uh, these three Drawings are kind of similar to uh, to what we have learned in SQL, and the last the last operation here is called division. So uh, in division, there's no single query that in SQL that could do this division. So we need some sub queries to do to do it, and we will learn this later. So first, let's learn product or Cartesian product. So it, it is to combine information from two relations pairwise on tuples. So, so it is like it will result, it, it will give us a big table combines every permutation of the combination of tuples in the first table and tuples in the second table. So it is essentially a product. So the 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 size of the the size of the the result is the size of equals to the size of the f uh, the the size of the first uh, the first relation times the size of the second relation. So this is the the and and the schema will be a union of the attributes from the two operands. And this is the algorithm of calculating products. So essentially we will have two loops. So first we will go through all the all the all the tuples in the first operand. And then we attach and then for that tuple, we, we build a pair with every other, with every tuples in the second table. So, so this is how we do product. It will give us a very, very big table. So this is the example here. So uh, for example, if we want to, we want to get the result of uh, the product of R and S, it what we will do is we for I for each tuple of r we create uh, for each tuple of r 
we create a set of tuples for e for each tuple of s. So we combine it with each tuple of s to form a new tuple. So that's why the size of the result equals to the size of r times size of s. So this is called product. And the second operation here is natural drawing. So natural drawing is a specialized product. So we don't specify, we don't specify a condition here. We don't specify condition here. However, since it is natural drawing, we are drawing two tables naturally. And in order to draw them naturally, we need to find out the common attributes. And we we draw in the tables on the condition where the common attributes of table R equals to table S. So this is how we do natural drawing. So from the algorithm point of view, we are adding a condition here. We are adding a, adding a condition here. Uh, when we loop through the tuples of each individual operand. So if the attribute matches, we will combine them together. Otherwise, we don't. So this is an example of natural drawing. So for R, we have attributes A, B, and C. For S, we have the attributes of C and D. So when we do natural drawing, we are drawing these two tables according to the value of C. So only if the, s the value of C matches, we draw the tuples together. So that's why uh, in the end, we will have a table of two tuples because, because of the unique uh, values of C here provided by S. And theta drawing, so actually all the other drawings are specialized uh, product. So is, uh, they are all created by adding conditions for the Cartesian product. So the theta drawing is a specialized product containing only pairs that matches on a supplied condition here. So uh, you can build it as a generalized natural drawing. But but the difference here is that all the attribute names requires to be distinct. So for natural drawing, the the two tables should have should have uh, should have common attributes. But for theta drawing, they don't they don't they shouldn't have common attributes. So all the attribute names should be unique. But we can specify the condition of joining here. So instead of joining every tuple with uh, in one table with every tuple from another table, we can add some conditions to filter out some of the permutations or pairs here. So this is the concept of theta drawing. And this is an example of theta drawing. So as you can see here, the, the two operands should have different set of attributes and and we can specify the condition here for joining the two tables to filter out some of the pairs so this is this is how we do uh, theta join and the last join here is called outer join but this is not the last operator here the last join is called up outer join so outer join, so for natural join, and uh, w w what we what we do is we only ca we, we don't include values from any operand, the, the tuples from any operands that there's no matching, there's no matching from the other ta from the other table. 
from the other relation. So this is uh, this is uh, the theta drawing and natural drawing. But for outer drawing, other than the other than the tuples or pairs of tuples fulfilling the conditions, we also include the tuples from a particular operand relation. So for left outer drawing, we are including all the all the tuples from the left operand. For right outer drawing, we are including all the tuples from the right operand. And for full outer drawing, we are including the tuples from all the two uh, operand relations. So uh, this is actually very similar to what we have learned in SQL. And and the default behavior is also similar. So for un unmatched attributes, uh, we are assigning the default value of now. So here is an example of left outer drawing. As you can see here, for for the a value equals to f, there's no uh, actually for 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 this third row of R, there's no matching on. On the in the table of s, so because uh, because c equals to z in this case, and there's no d equals to z in uh, in the table of s, so there's no matching for this row here, and we will put the default. We will still include it into the in the result, but we will set the values of d and e to be now. So this is mechanism of left outer drawing. And those drawings are very, very similar to what we have learned uh, in SQL. And there are small differences, but they are essentially very similar. And the new concept here is called division. So for division, the there are there's a restriction of the two operands. So one of the operands must be a subset of the other one. So the right hand side operand must be the must be a subset of the left operand. And R divided by S is is denoted as a set of tuples T where T has the attributes of the attributes R minus attributes of S. So the difference of R and S uh, will go to the uh, tuples of the division results. And it must satisfy a condition here. So this condition here, uh, it is quite long. And in natural language, it means that it means that the array array value of array value of s must appear must have um, must have an appearance uh, or, or occurrence in the table of r in the left operand we will show you an example later, but <laughs> don't get worried about the concept here. So operationally, how we collect the decision, uh, the division here is like uh, consider each subset of tuples in the left oper operand that matches the difference of uh, the attributes between R and S. And for this subset of subset of tuples we take the value of the uh, from the table of the right hand right operand and if if this covers all the values of all the values that appears in the right out right operand we will put that result in the we will put that value of uh, difference between r and s into the result so uh, it's it's kind of similar to m math uh, uh, the division, so to mathematical division or numeric division, 
So uh, the the R must be multiply multiplies of uh, multi multipliers of S. So let's show you an example here. So this is a con relatively new concept. So let's show you an example. So here is a table of R, and here is a table of T. So can we can we do a can we do R divided by T S? Uh, actually, the answer is yes because uh, they have this. Uh, they have uh, because they have the same set of attributes, and they can be divided. And uh, of course, we can also divide uh, R and R or S by T. This is because the attributes of T is a subset of attributes of R, and it's also a subset of attributes of S. But we can't, but we can't divide T by R or S because we can't divide. Uh, it, it, it is like we can't divide a larger table with a smaller table, but we can't divide a smaller table by a larger table, and. And here is the result of R divided by T. So for T, this is how we do it. So the result should include R minus T, the attributes of R minus T. So what is the attributes of R minus T here? So the difference here is A, right? So the result should contain attribute a here and and how can we get the values here so now we know okay the the the, uh, the result should have attribute a but what about the values the values is like this for r divided by t we can see that for because t has x and y for the value of b and let's go through the 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 column or the, attrib the attribute values of B in table R. We can see that, okay, X and Y appears here for the value of 4 for A in table R. Then we should put 4 into the result. And X, Y also appears for the value of 5 of A in table R. So we should put the value 5 of A in the result. This is how we calculate R divided by T. And for S divided by T, what, what we are thinking, uh, the thinking process is kind of similar. So first, let's determine what which attribute should be put into the result. So the result should be s minus t, so and s minus t is is actually the same as r minus t, is a. So we should put the attribute a into the result, and to determine the values, let's go through the table the the values of b in relation s. So uh, for remember for t the the value of b could take x and y, and f and in this and in this table here, when a equals to four, b can take both x and y. So that's why we should put four into our result. However, when a is equal to five, the the value of b can take x or z it it doesn't cover it doesn't cover the the, the all the values of of t so we shouldn't include 5 into the result so this is the definition of division so it is it is like uh, how you do numeric div division so how the uh, so the, the the it is like the the 
the divisor the divisor here uh, is uh, must have its entire appearance or uh, occurrence in the divided value so that's that's why we should uh, that's why th that's how it works and that's why there's a difference between r divided by t and s divided by t so this is the concept of division and let's have a 10 minutes break before we come to the last topic today and you can you can grab some snacks uh, i didn't forget to bring snacks today so come and grab some
Uh, all right, let's start uh, the second half. So after we have learned all the all the relational algebra, so you may wonder, okay, why are we learning these concepts? Uh, it's because they are actually very, very useful for uh, for DBMS to do optimizations. Or they are actually the, the, the so-called machine code executed by the DBMS engine. So let's learn how does DBMS execute queries. So this this course is actually not a course on the acti architecture of DBMS. And that course is uh, actually a graduate course. But knowing a little bit about how DBMS work can help can help you to avoid or fix uh, the efficiency issues uh, in your applications. So it is like if you know the mechanism of Python or C, the Python interpreter or C compiler, when you write your program, you can optimize your program. So it's similar if you know how the DBMS works, how this engine works, uh, we will, we can somehow optimize the queries we are writing. So, so DBMS is trying to handle this efficiency issue of the user provided query with a module called query processing. And it has several methods for evaluating queries. And and you can use this knowledge to make your application more efficient. So this is our view of DBMS so far. So what we have learned is to use SQL queries uh, and, and to write queries and give it to the DBMS and get the results. But what we don't know is what's happening inside the DBMS. So now let's learn what's happening inside. So one view of DB engine, it is actually like a virtual machine for running relational algebra. So uh, if you know the Java virtual machine, so it's actually not executing the source code of Java. It's executing the bytecode compiled uh, from the Java source code. And this virtual machine is like we can compile the queries into relational algebra operations and execute the relational algebra operations in this virtual machine. So, so the machine code of this such a machine is uh, like all the all the basic all the basic operations uh, of what we have learned and some basic algorithms like sort. Or there are there are some uh, data updating uh, operations as well, like insert and delete. For each of these operations, there are various data structures or algorithms available, and DBMS may provide only one, or they some sometimes they may provide you a choice. And this is how DBMS do query evaluation. So first, given a query in the form of SQL, it uses a parser to pass it into relational algebra expressions. And based on this relational algebra expressions, it will optimize them into uh, the optimized form. And, and it will supply the the optimized relational algebra operations to the DB engine to collect the r to 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 execute uh, these operations. So this is uh, what's happening inside. And as you could see from what we have learned in our first half, uh, relational algebra has some conceptual or relation or link with SQL. Actually, we can map 
SQL to relational algebra. So actually this is this select here is essentially the same as these relational algebra operations. As you can see, the the select select a certain attribute A is actually corresponds to project. And the real condition actually goes to the selection condition here. So the basic mapping here is select clause becomes projection. So it is used to specify the attributes we would like to have in our result tuples. And the real condition becomes selection or join. So it is used to specify the condition for filtering tuples. And the from clause normally becomes joined. So let's have a look at an example of mapping here. So for this database schema, we have five tables. We have person, we have subjects. Uh, we have the person refers to students. We have students, we have subjects, we have terms, we have courses, and we have enrollments. And how can we get the subjects with more than 100 students enrolled? So for SQL, what can we do here? Actually, we need, we need for, for subject, it is not directly related to person. We need to use the relation between subjects and courses to find out all the courses for for a particular subject, and use the enrollment table to find out the person or the students enrolled for a course, and then add them together to count the number of students. So this is what we can do. We need two joins here, as you can see. We need to join the table of subject and courses. And we also need to join the result from with the enrollment table. And this SQL query could be compiled into these uh, relational algebra operations. So we can join the two tables together and we can do a group, group count and then we can select. Or equivalently, it could be uh, compiled into this form. So the difference here is in the first in the first uh, oper sequence of operations, we are joining the tables of uh, course and enrollment first. But the, but in this in this table in this result in this example here, uh, in the second one here, we are joining the tables of course with subject first, and then we join it join the result with enrollment. These so the question here is which one is better. So actually, the actually for this particular example, we don't have a clear answer without more context. We need more context about the actual data, uh, what's inside these tables, to decide which one is better. But but the question here is, since we can compile the a single query into different sequences of relational algebra operations, we need to somehow decide which alternative or which choice is better. So that's the, the, the key here. So And this precise is called query cost estimation. So the cost of evaluating a query or executing a query is determined by the operations specified in the query execution plan. And this is a key concept here we will be learning later. And uh, the query execution plan is basically a sequence of 
uh, relational algebra operations. And it's also determined by the size of relations. And it also it's also determined by the access mechanisms. If we have indexed certain attributes or certain tables, we uh, normally it will be much faster. And of course, Guan algorithms will also affect the result. If we don't use uh, the proper drawing, uh, we may end up uh, losing some efficiency. And the last factor that affecting the cost here is the size or number of memory buffers. And that's uh, the limitation of the hardware. And, uh, and the, ana the analysis of costs often involves uh, estimating the size of intermediate results. So, so the, the size of the intermediate results actually affect the um, cost of the next steps. So that's why the, the just now in, in the previous two examples, the cost could be different because the intermediate result of the drawing of, of the first drawing could be different and it could affect the, the efficiency of the second drawing. So that's why the first, the first step involves uh, estimating the size of intermediate results. And then uh, based, on the, based on the estimation of the intermediate results, we also need to calculate the secondary storage accesses because, because database actually stores data on the, in the hard disks and uh, accessing hard disks is much slower than accessing memories. So we also need to take this into account. And just now we mentioned one of the key factor affecting the cost of a query is called a um, query execution plan. So an execution plan is a sequence of relational algebra operations. So let's consider this uh, this drawing, drawing of three different tables, the theta drawing of three different tables on different conditions here. So the first condition is D and the second condition is E. And here are three alternatives for us to do this uh, to do this uh, uh, query, and they uh, they they are using different sequences of joining, and they could use different uh, relational algebra operators. So the cost would be different. And for in actual implementation of relational algebra operations in DBMS. Uh, here are some potential op options. So for sorting, we can use external merge sort. So note that it's external merge sort. Uh, we are not using quick sort or other in-place sorting algorithms uh, because it will because normally the data is stored in the hard disk, and if we if we do in-place sorting, it will be kind of slow. And the worst case, uh, the worst case of this quick sorting algorithm is uh, to the is the square of the of the number of tuples. So that's why we we should avoid the 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 actual implementation of DBMS. They don't use quick sort. And for selection, there are many many different types of selection. So if we have indexed if the we have told the DBMS to index certain tables, it could use index-based selection, or it could use hash-based selection if it do some specific settings. However, if it don't do anything, it will be the worst case. It will do a sequential scan. It will scan through all the tuples. So that's very slow. And for joining, we have 
uh, we can we can join tables with next loops. This is the algorithm we have discussed in the previous slides, and this is the slowest one. And we can do salt merge join. We can also do hash join if we have hashed the the the, the we have maintained the hash table of the the actual tables. So so all these factors, all these choices of operations could affect the performance here. And for query optimization, so we need to decide what is the best method for evaluating a query. And generally the best means the lower cost or the fastest execution or evaluation time. And cost is measured in terms of pages r read or written. So it's basically it determined by the the operations of reading or writing data into the hard disk from the memory and the hard disk. So data is actually stored in a fixed size of blocks, uh, for example, for KB. Uh, and data transferred from disk to memory is in whole blocks. And the cost of disk to memory or memory to disk um, operations is the highest cost in this system here. So, so that's why the cost is often measured in terms of I/O operations, and precise and the precise the processing of data in in memory is actually very fast. So, so when we do query optimization, we should somehow make the DB to a wide to a uh, to a wide uh, interaction with the hard disk. So that's the strategy for query optimization. And here is an algorithm for for DBMS to do query optimization here. So the input is sorry, the input is a set of relational algebra expressions and the output is the uh, the optimal execution plan. So the the key idea here is you please don't don't get overwhelmed by this algorithm here. So the key idea here is the D DBMS will just simply go through all the possible execution plans, estimate the cost, and select the one with the lower cost. So it's not very complex. It's just going through everything and select the best. And typically, there are many possible plans. And smart and and this this optimizer is not actually executing those plans; it's estimating those plans based on their I/O operations. So, a smarter uh, op optimizers will give us a subset of possible plans uh, instead of just a single best. Uh, single best uh, execution plan. So that's how DBMS works for uh, query optimization, and that's why we we don't really have an answer for the mapping example previously because we need more context about the size of different tables, about whether they are indexed or not. But but this is how DBMS works, and you should. You should be after today's lecture. You should be able to know uh, the concepts of relational algebra. How are they matched between? Uh, how how do we match between SQL and relational algebra operations? And and you should know that they are useful for optimizing queries for DBMS. And in our next lecture, we will learn more more some more practical uh, uh, solutions for optimizing uh, queries as a developer. And we will also learn some more features of DBMS, like how do they handle the access of multiple users. And, and that's all for today's lecture. 
and thank you for coming.